Good evening and welcome to News 360. It is coming to you live from our news hub here at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. I am Aisha Yakubu. And my name is Parkus Yasari. Coming up in the next 60 minutes. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint, Piccadilly Biscuits, and My Life Insurance. Security beefed up at Achim Jampomeni and Herman in the eastern region following clashes between communities. Also, at Accra High Court revokes bill granted Gregory of Foco, accused of the murder of the Upper East Regional Chairman of the New Patriotic Party, Al Hadi Adams Mahama, in 2015. Also in the bulletin, workers of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority back down on sit-down strike after representation on Tema Port Concession Agreement Review Committee. And in Business Institute for Energy Security projects between 1.5 and 2% fuel price increase in July 2nd pricing window. And later in world news, South Africa's former president Jacob Zuma has told a judge-led inquiry that allegations of corruption against him were a conspiracy aimed at removing him from the political scene. We've got details of all these stories plus many more coming up in the next 60 minutes. A reminder, we're streaming live on Facebook. You can also join us with the views, comments, and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour. We're very active on social media. Our handle is TV3GH on Facebook and on Twitter. Now, security has been beefed up at Achim Jampomeni and Herman in the Fantiaqua district of the eastern region following clashes between residents of the two communities over mining. Now, the town folks have been protesting the pollution of the Berim River and degrading of the envir environment by the Dom Mining Firm. Residents of Jampomeni mounted roadblocks preventing cars from moving to and fro the Achim Hermine amidst manhandling of drivers and passengers while threatening to clash with protesters at Achim Hermine opposing mining in the area. The accused resident of Achim Hermine of being incited by their distilled chief, Professor Mrikisi Apori Atta. A police team from the Kibi district, uh, which arrived early in the community, were resisted by the residents of Jampomeni, hence the deployment of a counter-terrorism unit from the Regional Police Command. All right, we're trying hard to reach the police in that area to give us updates of what's happening on this developing story. As and when we do, we'll bring that to your attention. Now, workers of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority have backed down on a sit-down strike after representation on the Tema Port Concession Agreement Review Committee. This was announced by the Director General after he met with the workers. Josephine Frimpong has the rest of the story. This was to kickstart a sit-down strike on Monday 15. Workers abandoned their post and group at the forecourt of the Tema port, slowing down work. We've been struggling to get some containers and we are still in that struggle. But in that struggle, I don't want any of you to decide that we will not be working. We'll be playing into the hands of people who want to take away everything. This is the attitude I want to see. You should not stay back. We should change our attitude and be more forceful. They will see that, yes, GPHA staff, we are serious. And they will give us what we want. Management of the authority led by the Director General, Michael Luguji, addressed the aggrieved workers. It requires that all container business, right, virtually 99% of the container business should move to MPS. And when that happens, it means that the current crop of staff who are directly engaged in container operations in GPHA will be redundant. That's what it means. So if we want a solution, then it should be a solution that would take a look at what amount of business GPHA is doing today in terms of container business. And then whether as parties we can agree to retain that business for GPHA to continue to handle. That's it. That is one major solution. Aside the grievances, 
They express fresh concerns over a new secular from government not allowing them to work on reefer containers. I'd like to engage with um, TRE and, and EMT, the economic management team, to ensure that they have a, um, a solution that would let GPHA keep um, its container reefer business. Because if we, if we don't do that, um, it's, it's a possible area for, for, for trouble. Because you can't just say that the oh, containers are getting missing. And so you are blaming you know, GPHA staff and then also ensuring that the, you bring an arrangement that denies GPHA of doing that, that business. No, without evidence, without any serious proof. The General Secretary of the Maritime Dock Workers Union, Osu Kwanting, is hopeful of positive results. Away from the ports, let's go to the courts now. An Accra High Court has revoked the bail granted Gregory Afoko, accused of the murder of the Upper East Regional Chairman of the New Patriotic Party, Elijah Ad Elijah Adams Mahama, in 2015. Jurors are expected to be empaneled on the July 17 agent date. On March 14, 2019, Another cry high court presided over by Justice George Boedi admitted Gregory Afoko to bail in a sum of 500,000 cities with two sureties, one of whom must be justified. That was after his lawyers had argued that their client deserved to be granted bail because the state was not ready to prosecute him. The lawyers based their argument on a nolly prosecutor filed by the Attorney General on January 28 to discontinue Afoko's trial after more than three years. The AG filed a nolly prosecutor after the arrest of Asabgi Alangdi, the other person alleged to have conspired with Afoko to allegedly commit the murder. At a hearing on Monday, another high court presided over by Justice Meli Ifua Wood, a justice of the Court of Appeals sitting in as additional high court judge, revoked the bail granted to Gregory Afoko. The court revoked the bail after upholding the arguments by the prosecutor, Chief State Attorney Marina Piopon, who argued that the circumstances under which Afoko was granted bail had changed. According to her, the other court granted Afoko bail on the basis that the state was not certain as to when to start prosecution. She further argued that there was the likelihood that Afoko will not appear before the court to stand trial if the bail was not rescinded. The late MPP Upper East Regional Chairman Alhaji Adam Mahama suffered severe bodily injuries after a substance suspected to be acid was allegedly poured on him in front of his house in Bogatanga in the Upper East Region on May 20, 2015. He later died from the injuries at the Bogatanga General Hospital. So we're going to stay a while longer on this uh, developing story. We want to do some analysis on it. On phone now is a private legal practitioner, Martin Pebgu. Thank you very much, uh, Martin, for your time. Good evening. Welcome to News 360. Um, now, under what provisions in law does a court have to reverse a bill granted um, a suspect, a suspect in this case, I'm talking about Gregory Afoko, by another court? Good. So uh, what it means is that when there is a new trial, like what is happening in this case, the accused person is put in the charge of the court. Okay, so it means that the judge has the decision to try the case from the beginning. Okay, and so normally, they is also one of the uh, matters that is considered. Okay, and then granted once there are, uh, if the court wants to grant, the court will grant. But usually, this must be taken by the accused lawyer. Okay? Yes, so the main thing is that because it is a fresh trial, yes, so everything, even including bail, appears to be done at fresh. But the main problem is that because this one, they has already been granted, and the accused person that Gregory Apoku had met the condition. So the expectation would be that, oh, and you know, the other court that granted the bill is a high court, and this is also another high court. Even though in this new trial that is about to start, the judge is a court of appeal judge, but she's he, talking as a, a high court judge. And in the other trial as well, yes, with L.L. Mensa, was also a court of appeal judge, but he was uh, sitting on the seat as a high court judge. So, part of it, what, is, what was expected was that. Oh, because another court had granted bail and 
it took some time for the accused to meet all the conditions. It would have been the, uh, so we're expecting that the court to say, okay, accused should remain on the former bail. That's usually the expectation, because, you know, this is a court that granted bail, so there's judicial committee and everything. But uh, in this case, the child has exercised a discretion in the other way and decided to revoke the former bail. Uh, Mr. Martin, many, including lawyers for Mr. Um, Afoku, have raised concerns about what they say is an abuse of his human rights. Now, what remedies can the accused person and his lawyers resort to in addressing this matter? So, what is going to uh, happen is that, you see, as I mentioned, because this is a threat by uh, naturally, uh, from the way it is, they would come properly before this new judge, you see, and apply for bail again formally, so that then if it doesn't work, then they can go to the court of appeal. All right, I've got to say a big thank you to you. Uh, Martin Pebu is a private legal practitioner uh, helping us to do some analysis on this developing matter. Meanwhile, Amnesty International says it will continue to seek justice for Gregory Foucault despite the new High Court ruling. Country Director of Amnesty International Robert Akotua Mwafo in an interview with 3 News expressed uh, disappointment over having been kept in custody despite the earlier ruling. We received it at Amnesty International as a worry news, especially when it comes to the issue of granting bail and the respect of human rights by our legal institutions and the very institutions put in place to respect, to ensure that they implement these rights that we are talking about. It was worrying to us. We think it's a very big problem that as a nation we need to look at all these systems from the judiciary to the police to even the Chief Justice, we need to everybody to look at this issue again because we believe that he had the right to be given the bail. We want to find out what happened within that period when he was supposed to be give, granted bail and why wasn't he given the opportunity to go home as the bail required. Who denied him access to his right as prescribed by law? From all the issues that are coming up and all the, 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 the matters that we've had, looking at the drama that happened in court when the IGP and the CID head were supposed to appear in court and they didn't, issues when they were supposed they were there and the later they weren't found, all this drama gives us a lot in, uh, to be concerned about, especially when it comes to the issue of ensuring that an individual who has been granted bill and has the right to be released was being held and these individuals knew about it and they didn't do anything about it whilst they were supposed to be the head of ensuring that we implement our legal processes which are in place. Our quest was to ensure that he is released on bail as prescribed by law and as, as has been granted to him by the court of, of competent jurisdiction. Now that they have put him back onto um, the case, we need to look at it and see how our advocacy strategy will ensure that every Ghanaian when granted bail, that nobody, including the police, and the judiciary and anybody would not hold them up even when they are given um, um, the granted bill by a court of competent jurisdiction. Away from that, the families of the three kidnapped Takrade girls have made a passionate appeal to civil society groups, statesmen, as well as the diplomatic missions to intervene in efforts to find their missing relatives. At a news conference here in Accra, they expressed dismay at the turn of events, particularly the posture by government on the case. The first victim, Prisla Bintum, was kidnapped in August 2018, before the two others, Prisla Mantebia Kranchi and Rutlav Kwesen, followed in December last year. Matters relating to the rescue of the girls have sparked much controversy and aroused sympathy and sentiments amongst Ghanaians. The families at the news conference expressed desperation for news about their relatives. I personally went to second day to see the regional commander. Upon my arrival, I was notified he had traveled and that his second in command was around. I was made to see him. We had a lengthy discussion. That is barely two months now. And all that he could point out was to give us words of encouragement that they are working tirelessly to bring them, to rescue them. Yes, of course, we do believe that it's not an easy task. 
But our problem here is, as you asked, the police should coordinate with us. They should be telling us, giving us information. But we hear nothing from them. In this case, had it not been for the fact that I went there myself, we wouldn't have gotten any information from them. Aside calling on statesmen and a diplomatic mission to intervene in the situation, they want the police to stop giving them false hope. The posture of the police is, is pushing us back from seeking further um, information from them. They said they've set up a liaison committee. The liaison committee doesn't collaborate. They don't tell us anything. We go there by ourselves and we, it's the same story. What is most shocking is how the Ghana Police Service and national security operatives were able to gather all arsenals to rescue the two missing Canadian nationals with the speed of light three weeks after they were reported missing. So we ask, why can't the same security agencies in the country use that use same bold speed to bring back our girls? The families plan to stage another demonstration on August 10th if nothing is heard from government. Stay with us here on News 360. There's more news after this break. Hello, good evening and welcome to the business news segment here on News 360. Let's begin with some uh, news in the energy sector. And the Institute of Energy Security, IES, is projecting an increase in fuel prices ranging between 1.5 and 2% in the second pricing window of July. Research analyst at the Institute, Megdad Mohammed, attributed the projection to some increase in the prices of petrol and diesel on the international market during the period under review. A research analyst at the Institute for Energy Security, Megdad Mohammed, explains why prices were stable during the first pricing window under the deregulated regime. Of uh, some uh, development on the international markets, uh, yes, within the period two, we had uh, some very good news on the currency. It did not uh, depreciate widely. It was quite a marginal depreciation. And then you look at the international market, prices were just some quite marginal. So oil marketing companies, as part of the deregulation policy, of course, uh, kept their prices unchanged. Petrol price has gone up by 6.64% and diesel was up by 2.41% on the international market. The city has also depreciated marginally by 0.93% during the period under review, while taxes and levies on petroleum products have remained unchanged. We anticipate fuel prices to go up between about 1.5% to 2%. Uh, these increments can be obviously forestalled by the MPAs, either deactivation or activation of the price stabilization and recovery levy, depending on the element of the increment. So with, even with this projection, when uh, MPA comes in with the price stabilization, depending on the increment we are expecting, it could be marginal and not as high as uh, we have anticipated. The Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, Ghana, COPEC, is projecting that prices are likely to be stable at the local pumps. The executive secretary of COPEC, Duncan Amwa, explains. Expect fuel prices for second window July uh, to be quite stable. Um, our expectation would have been to even get a reduction, but for the enforcement of the stabilization and recovery levy, there's even a lot of stock uh, in the Ghanaian system, and we think that Fuel prices largely uh, should remain as they are and um, we don't expect any increases at all. Guinness Ghana Breweries has launched the Yen Yen Boom, meaning Let's Grow Together. The program is intended to reward outstanding wholesalers, distributors and retailers across the country. The program to boost profitability among businesses in the value chain also seeks to reward innovative ways at ensuring products reach consumers. Corporate Relations Director of Guinness Ghana Breweries, Sylvia Owusu Ankoma, noted the loyalty program is a way to give back. As Guinness goes into this loyalty scheme, one of the 
big things we've done is to engage our key distributors to ensure that the supply within the value chain is reaching um, the targeted audience, which is our, our wholesalers and the, the bar operators. So over the period, we're going to ensure that there's consistent stocking of all products across board. The commercial director of Guinness Ghana Breweries explained how the program will run. They will also stand a chance of earning significant profits over and above the profits they currently make on our business because our brands are very profitable. So if you sell our products, you stand a chance of earning significant profits. But on top of that, we will be rewarding you when you hit certain milestones. The Minister for Business Development, Dr. Ibrahim Mohamed Awal, underscored the need to grow Ghanaian businesses to match international competition. The only way our distributors, our business guys in Ghana can compete and top to it is for you to grow them. Help improve the, the, the competence of the distributors. Give them training. And in give them training, please do not forget corporate governance issues. Guinness Ghana Breweries is a leading total beverage business which produces a market beer, soft drinks, and local and international premium spirits in the country. It has also, over the years, undertaken a number of humanitarian projects. Now, PZ Cousins Ghana has launched the second edition of the Cousins Baby Moment competition in Accra. The winner of this year's edition goes home with a whooping 10,000 CDs and gets to donate to any children ward of choice. Cousins Baby Moment is an annual baby photo contest aimed at encouraging family bonding through baby photos which will discover and crown the baby of the year. This year's event is on the theme, Sharing Magical Moments. The second runner-up gets 2,000 cities, while the first runner-up goes home with 4,000 cities. The 2019 Baby of the Year wins 10,000 cities and gets to choose a hospital or an orphanage for a donation from Cousin's Baby. If you're a parent or a guardian of a child between the ages of newborn and then 24 months, you can enter. And it's very simple. All you have to do is to buy any three Cousin's Baby products. Once you get that, you take a photo with your child in there with the, uh, the products visible. Upload on www.cousinsbaby.com.gh and that's it. Entries close on the 9th of September. Last year's second runner-up mother, Rinda Mante, shared her experience. It's been exciting. It makes you meet new friends. The exposure also, I think it's cool. There was a lucky dip where the first baby for the competition was selected. PZ Cousins is a major British manufacturer of personal health care and baby products which has grown to become one of the best health care brands in Ghana. Well, that's all for the business news segment here on News 360. For more business stories, you can log on to our website www.3news.com. Away from business, uh, Holy Trinity Medical Center has organized the sixth edition of the Hepatitis B Education Series. This is to help reduce the plague that Hepatitis B causes. Hepatitis B is a liver infection caused by the Hepatitis B virus, HBV. Hepatitis B is transmitted when blood, semen, or another blood fluid from a person infected with the Hepatitis B virus enters the body of someone who is not infected. This can happen through sexual contact, sharing needles, syringes, or other drug injection equipment, or from mother to baby at birth. The disease is 100 times more infectious than HIV. Holy Trinity Medical Center, in partnership with Art Farm, continues to educate Ghanaians on the scourge of hepatitis B. In Ghana, the prevalence of HBV is estimated to be 12.3%. Dr. Amakundia is a senior physician specialist of St. Dominic Hospital, Akwetia, and spoke about awareness creation. I think we need to create an awareness, and we need to do a lot of screening, especially at the community level. And even those who get to know that they are positive, what is preventing us from giving them adequate treatment is the cost. For the basic laboratory investigation, you don't need less than 800 Ghana to do those labs. Okay. And even those who require treatment, it's not covered by national health insurance, so they need to buy out of their pocket. And they need about 150 Ghana cities for a monthly supply of the drugs that they are going to take for a very long time. 
okay, because a bee is not curable, but we can treat. William Kofi Nti is a managing director of Art Farm Garda Limited, who partnered Holy Trinity Medical Center for the program. The meeting was basically a continuous medical education to support, help remind ourselves of what we do better. You know, as pharmacists, we always available to help in dispensing and management together for our doctors, and also to put protocols in place to streamline the way we manage things. Although there's no cure for hepatitis B, vaccines and drugs have been created to help prevent contraction of HPV and help manage it. Now, MTN Ghana has ended its 21 days of yellow care during which it provides social service to communities. Staff of the telecommunication company and other partners imparted the lives of 2,000 youth across the country by helping them acquire various skills which will empower them to live meaningful lives. The 21 days of the MTN Yellow Care is an annual internal activity of the company that seeks to encourage employees in Ghana and across its global operations to become personally involved in community development projects. In line with this year's theme, MTN channeled its resources towards implementing projects to empower the youth in various capacities. Chief Executive Officer of MTN Ghana, Selom Adadivo, commended the effort of staff and partners in this year's event. I wish to thank all our staff volunteers and the project planning committee and a big round of applause for the project planning committee. Fantastic work by you guys. And also to all MTNs who lit the various social media platforms up. We saw a lot of yellow in social media with some fantastic stories. So again, thank you very much. And I say Ayiko to all of you for sharing all the experiences with the world. Special awards and certificates were presented to corporate entities and staff of the company for the outstanding performance. We have, as Opco Ghana, done our 21 days of yellow care and today we are here to draw the curtain down on the 21 day of yellow care. In total, we have impacted approximately 2,000 youth in, in Ghana over the 21 day period. The theme for this year's event was creating a brighter life for the youth. You're watching News 360. The fate of the Musicians Union of Ghana National Election slated for July 17 is unknown as an Accra High Court has scheduled the hearing of an injunction case to July 23. A presidential aspirant, Ras K. Lebapia, caused an injunction to be placed on the election, alleging a flawed voters' register and reconstituted election committee. Also, Arai has more on the story. Originally scheduled to take place on June 26, the Musica national elections have suffered many postponements. On July 9, the Union's Elections Committee further postponed the election, announcing July 17 as the new date. Subsequently, a presidential hopeful, Ras Caleb Apia Levi, went to court to seek an injunction on the election, praying the court to order the election committee to compile afresh a valid and credible voters' register to guarantee a free and transparent result. Now, we find out that all of a sudden, the membership of Musica has just increased. And when you try to compare with the regional chairs, you say, well, our numbers are not so big like that. We have not seen no money like that. These are some of the things, okay, why a lot of, uh, all of a sudden, there are a lot of membership over there. Where is the money for that? So you, you suspect a ploy, a plan. It's a ploy, a plan, a plan to rig the elections. You can't have it so cheap. But and you think the court can get Ooh. you all the remedies? The like courts, I believe in the courts. I believe in the courts. That's why I didn't make any trouble anywhere. On Monday, Musica's lawyer filed a defense seeking the court to hear the case before July 17. The judge, however, indicated that he hadn't received the docket, advising that the case be heard on July 23. The decision implies that Musica cannot go ahead with the election on July 17 as planned. As it turns out, we will just have to wait for 23rd for, for the case to be determined in the court. Yeah. 
The director of special projects at Musiga, Bosco Ahumo Okansi, regrets the turn of events, noting Rasa Pia Caleb should have exhausted the union's internal dispute resolution processes. Our constitution indicates that in matters of dispute or conflict, the arbitration committee should handle those matters. However, it appears as if the aspirant did not go through or exhaust those processes. He wrote to the elections committee and copied the arbitration committee. And I think before anyone could say Jack, there was an injunction from the court. So I, um, I, I sincerely believe that um, Ras could have been a bit more patient. I wrote a letter of petition on the 1st of July. It was a Monday. It was dispatched. You never respond to me. No. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the Malaya says, this afternoon we are going to file a writ. Rasa Pia Caleb then is also seeking a declaration that the election committee, headed by Smart and Cancer, be dissolved and reconstituted. I don't, I don't trust the committee. I want it to be changed. No, 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 no. Interesting. We'll see what happens, Aisha. Definitely. And that's all for the news here this evening. There's more news on 3news.com. I am Aisha Yakub. And my name is Park Sorry. For more news, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com.